welcome back to the bond pony channel and today i'm going to show you how to diagnose and fix a stator on a two thousand and seven ninja six fifty most of this will apply to other motorcycles as well so in my case the bike died at a stoplight and i couldn't get it started so i would hit the switch and i would hear some electronic noises but i wouldn't hear the chugging of the motor trying to start um, and because it died while I was moving, or at a stoplight after I've been riding, um, that is an indication that it's not just the battery, but it's part of the charging system. So if the charging system was working, the battery would still be topped off, right? Um, when I pulled over, I found that the blinker still worked, but the, they were very dim. So I still had some power. I didn't have a voltmeter. When I got home, I found that I had about 12 volts, which is on the low side. Um, I charged up this battery with jumper cables from my car, put it back in, the bike started, um, ran for a couple seconds, I shut it off, I checked the voltage again and the voltage was much lower. In fact, while, while I was running I also checked the voltage and it wasn't a charging voltage of 14 and a half volts. So it's not charging and the battery's not holding a charge from what I can tell. And then just leaving the, the bike in the on position, I noticed the battery was draining. So that's another indication the battery itself is pretty weak. Um, is it just the battery being weak? Um, we know the charging system's not working either. So what probably happened is the battery died and the charging system was constantly fighting to keep it charged and burnt out. So in order to get to the charging system, you have your voltage regulator here. On the left side of the bike, you have your stator, which is your alternator under here, and you have some wiring So, in order to kind of understand and visually understand what's going on um, when we have a no crank, no start, um, here's a little diagram. So, here's the starting side of my system. I've got the key, I've got the starter switch, which activates this um, relay. I've got the starter motor and the battery. Now, the battery has to stay charged up, and so I have the stator, which is an alternator, on the inside of the engine. It sends its charge, which is AC current, that is, it's electricity is moving back and forth, and the bike can't use that, so it sends it to a regulator rectifier. This um, has diodes, which forces the, the electricity to move in one direction, that is direct current, and it also prevents it from overcharging, so it has a regulator to prevent it from getting too much charge, and that charge um, will come out of this connector into the positive terminal of battery, and then there's one, one wire which is going to go um, to the ground. And so, um, if I'm not getting this motor to turn over, which I didn't, and when I, when I tried to, I heard some clicking, which is the relay not getting enough power from the starter switch, so the voltage in the system is low enough to where this can't close to allow power through, another indication the battery's weak. So if I'm not getting this, I charge up the battery, it starts, that tells me that everything here works, the battery's just not powerful enough. Um, now, I wasn't getting the 14 and a half volts of um, charging voltage I should while the bike was running, which tells me this half of the system's not working. So, is it the, um, the state? I'm going to take my leads. Again, I'm going to measure each of the, the uh, top left and the top right pins against the bottom three. And then I'll do it in both directions for each. So, what you should see, you've got infinite resistance that way. And you should see fairly low resistance, so like 100 or something, 112. So 111 uh, kilo ohms in one direction, but zero in the or um, infinite resistance in the other. And so I'll measure. I measure both ways for those pins. I'll measure both ways here, both ways here, then both ways here, both ways here both ways here. And on each of them you should get infinite resistance in one direction and fairly low resistance in the other. And that's because diodes are one-way valves for electricity. They let electricity move this way but not back this way. There should be infinite resistance one way, low resistance the other. Now it's difficult for me to actually show you um, how I tested the stator. So I'm going to show you an example of the plug here. So um, set your meter on uh, 250 volts um, or um, AC and 
you will, I have a 300 volt option, but you will test this plug that comes out, there will be three leads in it, and you'll test each combination of those three. So here, here, here. And what you should find is that you should be getting 42 or more volts AC in each of those. Um, I got about 12, and this is while the engine is on and revved up to about 4,000 RPMs. So um, my stator seems to be uh, malfunctioning based on this test. You can also take a resistance measurement, so set it to um, ohms, and measure the resistance between each of these three, and you get about 0.2 ohms of resistance. My um, cheap Harbor Freight tool did not um, have the um, the uh, accuracy to measure that low resistance. So um, I was getting no resistance any of the directions, but I had already failed the voltage test, so I'm pretty sure that stator is bad. The question is, is the battery also um, damaged beyond repair? Um, so we're going to want to get all our materials together. Like I said, I bought a new battery. Here's a new stator from Rick's uh, Electronics. Um, I've got the hardware for holding in the stator and holding down the wire, and I've cleaned those up with uh, denatured alcohol, cleaned the old um, thread compound off there. I've got my Permatex, and I'll show you where this goes. Um, this will go around the rubber grommet for the stator. Um, it'll also go on two spots on the crankcase where the lower and upper crankcase match on those seams because they're not going to be perfectly even. They might be off a thousandth and um, allow oil to leak. So we'll be using blue Permatex. We'll get it on there, tighten all the bolts down slightly, and give it something like an hour and then crank them down the rest of the way. Give it a full day to cure before we fill it up with oil. I'm using um, blue Loctite, temporary Loctite, for these bolts to hold the stator and You don't want these falling off and bouncing around in the, um, the crankcase. Again, we've got a 8mm uh, socket for the outside of the stator cover. And we've got a 5mm um, hex bit or Allen key for the stator bolts themselves. And I'll include the actual torque specs um, in the notes, but do it by feel. This is aluminum housing, so you don't want to strip it out. Okay, the stator covers off, and by far the hardest part is getting this wire unclipped. That is a pain in the butt. Um, then you'll take the bolts out all the way around it. Just go slowly, put a drain pan under it, slowly pull it off. Oil will drain out. Be careful because here and here there are two pins. Those pins hold two gears that um, come off of the starter motor and turn the crankshaft. So um, s slowly pull it off and watch how they go in there. That way if you have to set the gears aside, um, you can remember how they go back in and take lots of pictures. Also, the bolts that go all the way around are not all the same size. So lay them out in a pattern like they were in the bike and then take a picture of it for your own reference. Here's the stator that came out. To clean this surface, I've been going over it with a piece of plastic, a bottle cap, and just scraping away and then using a razor blade for the little corners. There's going to be a pin here or a dowel and then a dowel here and this one is still on the bike. I have to do the same surface prep to the um, the bike as well, that surface as well. Um, the grommet will fit in here and I'll use um, Okay, the stator cover is off. This is what you'll see. Um, here's the crankshaft. You'll see two pins here. You'll see the um, gear from the starter motor right in there. And on these two pins, there'll be two gears. And this is um, each gear flipped over. So this gear will be on top, on the top pin, and this will be on the lower pin. This gear will be on the outside, and this will be on the inside. So it'll flip in like this. And those upper teeth will engage the starter motor. Those lower teeth will mesh with this gear, which sits on the bottom pin. Um, you'll use some um, silicon right where the wire comes out here, and also right down on the corner here. And that'll be on both.